Let's pray as we have the awesome privilege of opening up God's precious and holy and life-giving word. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, today we are looking for revival and reformation. We are looking for a great thing to happen in our life today as we sit at your feet, Jesus. We come, Lord, for our hearts to burn within us. To be corrected, to be taught. Lord, we come because maybe some of us here need healing today. Some of us need strength today. Some of us need repentance today. Some of us need to be resurrected. Some of us need to have created in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And so God, right now, speak, for we are listening, God. In the precious and powerful, the name above every name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. That's right, amen. A little child shall lead them. Amen. I'm going to move this over in the middle because I'm OCD like that. I like it straight on with that. <laughs> well, if you go out in the stores now, especially to Walmart, it is Christmas time. It's Christmas time. And, uh, you know, I, I'll say this. Christmas time is one of my favorite times of the year. Now that I'm a grandparent, it is. Um, you know, I, I, I can remember as a kid, I, I loved uh, decorating the Christmas tree. My mom had a rule, though, for my sister and I that we had to decorate the whole tree, not just the front where everyone could see it. <laughs> um, we, we had the same rule for Joey and Elisa. We said, you know, we want you to decorate the tree, but decorate every part of it, not just the front. Um, and, 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 you know, during Christmas time, the kids, they make special little ornaments and they bring them home you know they'll have an ornament with whatever it may be with their picture inside of it and every kid is like please put that on the tree and, and so my mom and dad would grab the one that my sister and I made first and we would grab the one that Joey and Elisa it was a special decoration a special ornament that all the kids love hanging on the tree well brothers and sisters let me tell you this the Bible talks about another tree Another tree that was decorated with a very special, and I, please forgive me if this offends you, but I'm going to say it anyway, with a special decoration, a special ornament. Acts chapter, oh, what's my fault? Acts chapter 5, verse 30. Look, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. 1 Peter 2, 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Amen. Jesus hanging on a tree on the cross for you and me. You see this plan for Jesus to die on the cross was planned long before it ever happened. It was not an afterthought. You will never hear God say wow I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> or that caught me off guard I'm, I'm so thankful that we, that we serve a God who knows the end from the beginning that nothing catches him off guard look at 1 Peter 1.20 he was foreknown before the foundation of the world but was made manifest in these last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God Acts 2.23, Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. 
Jesus on a tree for you and me. I mean, even Jesus himself talks about it in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man shall be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, whip, and crucify. And the third day he shall rise again. Amen. He shall rise again. Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. He knew why he came for you and me. He knew what God's plan was. But when you look at the cross, I begin to ask the question, why? What was the purpose? What was this plan? What was he to accomplish? You see, everybody has plans. I have plans. You have plans. Even sports teams have plans. The NFL. Sports teams there, they plan so they can score a touchdown. The NBA has a plan so they can score a goal. Baseball has a plan. Let's get, th let's get three outs. I have a plan. You have a plan. And we want to accomplish our plan. But what about this plan? What was this plan to accomplish Jesus hanging on a tree? We talk about it. We sing about it. We read about it. But what for? Why, Jesus? Why? Well, let me give you three reasons why I believe for the cross. Why? Number one says this, or I say this. Number one, through Christ's death on the cross, we are delivered from the penalty of sin. Amen. Through Christ's death on the cross, we are delivered from the penalty of sin. Galatians 3.13 Christ redeemed us. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole or hung on a tree. Galatians 3.13 Now listen to this. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. But, I love when Paul uses the word but. Especially in this verse. For the wages of sin is death. And he says, I'm not done. But, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You see Christ coming on the cross. We can be delivered from the penalty of sin. We can be delivered from death. We can be delivered from the curse. Because Jesus became a curse for us and hung on that tree. He hung on the cross so we don't have to have the wages of sin. So we don't have to die. Amen. Jesus is the gift of God that gives all of us eternal life. Amen. That's why he came. So we don't have to pay the penalty. He paid it for us. Amen. And this plan was thought out long ago, brothers and sisters. Because he wants us to live. He doesn't want us to suffer the penalty of sin. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it gets better. Number two, through Christ's death on the cross, we are delivered from the power of sin. Amen. Through Christ's death on the cross, we are delivered from the power of sin. First Peter 2 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, which means he took our sins. The sins of all the world he bore in his body on the tree that we might, listen, that we might die to sin but live to righteousness. By his wounds, you and I, or me, have been healed. Don't you love that? By his wounds, we've been healed. That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. That way that the sin has no more power over you and me. Look, Romans chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. That's Christ. So that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Amen. 
You see, Christ came and died on the cross so that the power of sin will no longer have power over us anymore. That we might die to sin but live unto righteousness. Now let me just say this, brothers and sisters. Let me talk about this, the deliver from the power of sin. There's a little process called sanctification. That's the work of a lifetime. I believe the moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this begins to happen. Freedom begins. Freedom begins. But it's something that you will fight for the rest of your life. I'm telling you. Once you're delivered from one, I'll, I'll give you an example. All right? Here's an example from my own life. The Lord delivered me from smoking and drinking. He delivered me. Amen. All right? Now, that's not the only two sins that I had to put up with in my life. <laughs> Every day I'm fighting other ones. Well, I'm not fighting. He's fighting. We just say that. I say no to it, okay? It's because God is delivering me from the power of sin in my life. Amen. Once you're delivered from one, another one will pop its ugly head up. And it will, it will say to you, don't forget about me. <laughs> you see, you're going to be tempted always. Temptation is not a sin. Being tempted is not a sin. Even Jesus was tempted. But let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. Once you are tempted, here's what you do. I'll give you a little, a little secret. What you can do once you're tempted. You run and you fall on your knees and you stay there until the temptation subsides. Amen. It will. It will. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be honest and frank with you. It will subside. But then it will come right back around. And that's when you fall on your knees again and you pray until the temptation subsides. You see, there's a, there's a war that's going on in all of us. And you see, every day we choose who wins. That's why the Bible says, choose this day whom you will serve. You see, God wants to deliver us from the power of sin. He wants to deliver us from the penalty of sin. Because He knows how destructive sin is. Sin is destructive. And God wants to deliver us from it. And you may not be battling what I'm battling, and I'm not battling what you're battling. But the good news is that God wants to deliver you from it and me from it. He wants to do what he says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He wants to crush Satan's head in your life. He wants to crush Satan's head in your life. Amen. And that's why he came to die on the cross for you and me. So that we can be delivered from the penalty and the power of sin. But you see, it, it, it is also that through Christ's death on the cross, that all people are drawn to Him. You see, John 12, 32 says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. When I, let me put it this way, when I am lifted up from the earth, people at the Raleigh Seventh-day Adventist Church will be drawn to me. Amen. Not to the pastor, not to the head elder, not to anyone, but to Jesus. Chapter 3, verses 14, or John 3, 14 through 16. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish. 
I like this. I like I like this this word better. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. Amen. But have everlasting life. Amen. You see, Jesus on the cross not only delivered us from the penalty or the power, but he says, if I'm lifted up, I will draw everyone to me. Yes. Why? Because he is the one with the power to deliver us. He's the only one who can save us. Let me try that again. <laughs> You see, it's okay to say amen. I love it. I love it. Amen. amen. There you go. You see, it's through him being lifted up that all people are drawn to him. Amen. There you go. <laughs> How can you not be? I love that picture. That, that picture that says, Lord, how much do you love me? And he stretched out his arms and he died and he said, I love you that much. You see, it's through him being lifted up that people are drawn to him. It is through Jesus being lifted up that reconciliation with God happens. You see, the definition of reconciliation means that we're brought into agreement with that a relationship is restored. That's what Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 says. You see, it is through him being lifted up that forgiveness happens. It's only because of Him being lifted up that we have forgiveness. You see, forgiveness means to pardon and to cancel a debt. And every one of us has a debt that's too big to pay. Jesus had to pay it. That's why I love that song that we sung, Jesus paid it all. Because we couldn't. And when Jesus is lifted up, and we come to Him just as we are. There's good news, brothers and sisters. There is, there, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. And because you belong to Him, the power of the life-giving Spirit has freed you. Listen. Has freed you from the power and the penalty of sin that leads to death. Amen. No condemnation. No condemnation when you come to Jesus just as you are. And the reason is, is because he was lifted up and took the penalty for us. Amen. He took the penalty for us. I want us to look. I don't have this scripture. The next few scriptures I don't have on the screen. I want us to look at our Bibles. If you have your phone or a smart your tablet, whatever you have. I want us to look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Think about this, brothers and sisters. Isaiah chapter 53. This is what Jesus went through for you and me. Isaiah chapter 53, we're going, to begin, we're going to begin in verse 1. Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 1. Isaiah asks the question, he says, Who's believed our message? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed, or his strength? Then it's talking about Jesus, and it says, For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He has no beauty or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. Now listen, this is what he went through. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely our sins or our griefs, he himself bore our pains our sickness he bore our sorrows he carried yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities or crushed for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace fell upon him by his stripes we are healed 
All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shears, he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due, his grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was a rich man, in his, yet he was with a rich man in his death. Because he'd done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief, rendering him a guilt offering. He will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his foreknowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify many. He will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I allow him a portion with the great and divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out himself to death, was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Amen. He did this for you and for me. Why? So we can be delivered from the power and the penalty of sin. Amen. So that we will have no condemnation so that we will be delivered. So that he can be lifted up on high. He said, I love you. And he couldn't stand the thought of being without us. So he took our place. <coughs> He died for us. He was wounded for us. He bore our sins for us so that we won't have to. If we just come to Him as we are, if we look at the cross and see our Savior hanging there, He wants us with Him and He wants to be with us. Amen. Because He wants to do away with sin in our lives because He knows how deadly, how destructive sin is. And He wants to deliver us. Let's visit this cross. Let's visit this cross. Everyone turn to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. We're going to begin in verse 26, but I want to pick it up before that. Jesus is on trial. And the Pharisees and all the people get to pick which one do they want? Do they want Barabbas or do they want Jesus? And it's interesting when you study about Barabbas and his name. The name Barabbas means son of the father. Jesus said he's the son of God. So they get to choose which son do they want. Which one? All of us get to choose which son do we want every day? Which son do we want? Joshua says, choose this day whom you will serve. You pick which son do you want. Do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? Every morning when you wake up, you choose. I choose. So he's on trial. And unfortunately, the people ask for Barabbas to be released, and they begin to yell, crucify him, crucify him. So their choice was granted. 
And there is Jesus walking along, carrying the cross for you and me to the place called Calvary. But he's on his way. In verse 26, it says, And when they led him away, they laid hold of one Simon of Cyrene coming in from the country and placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. Now, how would you like to be Simon? You're coming in from the country. And they said, you carry this. You see, we learned a lesson there. Jesus tells us to take up our cross and follow him. Be like Simon. Take up the cross and follow him. He carried it behind Jesus. And it says, And there were following him a great multitude of the people and of the women who were mourning and lamenting him. But watch what Jesus says. In verse 28, he says, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Because the days are coming, verse 29, when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and the hills cover us. For if they do these things in the green tree, what will happen when it's dry? Now listen, and two others also who were criminals were being led away to be put to death with him. Verse 33. And when they came to the place called the Skull, or Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. That's interesting. Because the one in the middle was considered the worst criminal. One criminal on the right, another criminal on the left, and Jesus in the middle, which he was considered the worst criminal. So he's hanging on the tree for you and me and for all those there. But watch what he says. And he just doesn't say this for that time, but he says it for all of us living even in 2019. He says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He's hanging on the cross. And he cries out, Father, forgive him. Now, let me just say this. He doesn't just cry out, okay? You're hanging on the cross. You're, you're hung down low, all right? You have to prop yourself up to speak because you can get no air otherwise. You have to pull yourself up. Here you have nails. Here he has nails in his hands and feet. And he has to pull himself up. And he just doesn't say, as some people say, Father, forgive them for they know what they're doing. No. He has to strain the dog. He has to lift himself up. And he says, Father. And I can those down. Oh, forgive them for they know not. And then he goes back down. And they're casting lots to divide his garments. They didn't know what was happening. All they saw was a criminal hanging on a cross. That's why the people say in verse 35, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen one. And the soldiers gathered around also mocked him, coming up to him, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. But brothers and sisters, he could not save himself and save us. He had to stay there. He had to stay on the cross. For us to be saved. And now watch what's next. Watch. 
Verse 39, one of the criminals who was hung there began hurling abuse and all types of blaspheming words at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other one, the other criminal answered, Now think about it, they have to lift themselves up as well to even talk. Do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed justly for our deeds? But this man, this man, he's talking about Jesus. This man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus Remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus, straining to lift himself up, looks at him and says, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. He's dying. Jesus is on the cross. He's been beaten. He's been smacked. His hair has been pulled out. He has a crown of thorns on his head. And these just weren't little bitty briars either that we see that get stuck in our bicycle tires and flatten the tires. No, these were long briars. And they, they just didn't take it and just gently place it on his head. No, they slammed it down on his head. And blood flow. And he's on the cross. And he is still in the mindset of saving you and me and this criminal. Amen. All he had to do was ask, Lord, remember me. And you will be with me in paradise. The sixth hour, which was about noon, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour for three hours. The sun was darkened, everything. The veil of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice, verse 46, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Verse 47, now when the centurion saw what had happened, this guy, this, I want you to know, Look at it. This guy was standing right down here watching what happened. He, I, I believe the centurion heard him say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I believe the centurion heard him say, You will be with me in paradise. He saw it all. And he says, Surely, this man was innocent. But not only did he say this man was innocent, the Bible says he began praising God. Right then, he watched it all happen and he began praying God and he said, this man was innocent. The Bible says, and all his acquaintances and the women who accompanied him, all the disciples, everybody who saw him, everybody who was there, from Galilee, the Bible says we're standing at a distance, seeing these things. They were standing at a distance, seeing these things. I want to ask you a question, and I'm asking myself. Are you watching? Do you see what's happening? When you look at the cross and you see Jesus hanging there, what do you see? What do you see? What goes through your mind? Let me tell you what goes through your mind. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved Jeff Crane. And he gave his one and only son to be lifted high 
on the cross to save me from the power and the penalty of sin. That I can have eternal life. That there will no longer be any condemnation upon me. That the power of sin is broken. Amen. The penalty of sin is broken. Amen. And brothers and sisters, this is for you as well. For God so loved, say your name. And he gave his one and only son for you. You see, on the cross, Jesus was thinking of you when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive Jeff, because he doesn't know what he's doing. He's saying to you today, if you say to him, Lord, remember me, he will say, you will be with me in paradise. All you have to do is just say, remember me, Lord. Don't forget about me. And the good news is the Bible says he will not forget about you because he's engraved you in the palm of his hands and in his feet and in his side. Mm -hmm. So there may be someone here today. There may be someone here today who needs the power and penalty of sin broken in their life. There may be someone here today seeing these things, seeing the cross and Jesus lifted high and, and up and needs to come to Jesus today. Maybe you're holding on to something. I don't know what it is, but God does. And he wants you to come. He wants you to come. And he wants you to say, Lord, remember me. And he'll say, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. And the power and the penalty will be broken. See, Jesus did this so we can live. So we no longer have to fight the battle that we fight every day in our life. He'll fight it for us. Victory is ours because of Jesus. So we're going to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. And if you want to come to the cross and just say, Lord, remember me. As we sing, you can come and join me. As we sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Let's all stand as we sing. And you can come to Jesus right here as you are. And the power and penalty of sin will be broken in your life.
Thank you so much for the cross. Thank you that when we say, Lord, remember me, you say you will be with me in paradise. That through the cross, the power and the penalty of sin was broken. When we come to you just as we are, there is therefore now no condemnation to all who come to you. For the Spirit has broken the power and the penalty of sin. Lord, every one of us here, we have, all of us have struggles every day of our life. We're, we're, we're fighting, we're battling temptation and sin and everything, but we know God. With you, there's victory. There's victory. Because we've read the end of the story. And with you, we win. So God, help us now. Keep us always at the foot of the cross. And every day, may we choose you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.